So James, I heard that since you've had the book, you've read it more than once. How many times have you read it? So, so I got the book in pieces. And so I've read the first half of the book about 36 times. 36 times. And then the second half of the book, because I got it the second half late, later, I've only read that 13 or 14 times at this point. <laughs> only 13 or 14. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> Well, it, it takes time, but it actually reads fast. It's one of those ones where you you want to keep turning the page and you stay up late at night doing it. And then you was like, well, just one more chapter, then I'll go to bed. Absolutely. I'm right there with you. I did the same thing. Each time I read it, I pick up something new. And so I keep going back. And so it's, it's just, a, it's one of those books that is a page turner for me. That is just awesome. I, I too found myself um, having to reschedule my days because I couldn't put it down. Like you said, it was such a page turner that if I got interrupted, it was frustrating. It's like, no, I just got to finish this chapter. <laughs> well, yeah. And then it's just like, oh, well, just one more chapter and I'll, then I'll go to bed. <laughs> right, right. I did that too, where it was so late by the time I finally went to sleep because I just wanted to finish it. I just wanted more. It really takes you on such an awesome journey and adventure. Um, you just can't wait. So it's kind of like binge watching, but it's binge reading, I guess you would say. <laughs> and binge reading, well, there's so much more content in a book than you could ever get from anything you watch. So that's part of the reason why I keep going over reading books over and over again is because I, I find I miss, I find things that I missed before mm -hmm. or just a little piece. It's like, oh, now I understand why that was in the first page of the book and that it brings it all tied in later on. And I am so glad that you have caught on to that because I don't know how many interviews we've already done with um, previous readers who've completed the book, but I think you're probably the only one that has made that connection where there were these little hidden, what we would call Easter eggs throughout the book, and you did find them and tie it together, which is just so exciting. And it does give the reader an opportunity to go back and reread it again to, to look for those. Well, not only that, it, it, uh, you get better value out of your book because you're reading it a dozen times probably. Uh, but the other thing is, is that those little Easter eggs, like you say, those little tie-ins uh, make it much more fun to read. And when you read it over and over again, you, you keep seeing it and, it and it is entertaining the second time and the third time and the fourth <laughs> and the 34th. Right. <laughs> yeah, people like you and me could really get our money's worth out of a book. If you're a Christian, you probably have heard the story of Goliath before, David and Goliath. But there were, I was finding things, it's like, well, wait a minute, was that actually in the Bible? And I'd have to go back and check it. One of my favorite stories of all time is Jonathan and his armor bearer going up that mountain and taking out 20 Philistines. Okay, that's oh, yeah. two against 20. And you're just like, Lord, when you read it in scripture, it's like, Lord, how in the world would something like that happen? And then for Dean to put that in his book and give us details on how that would happen is just phenomenal. I love it. Well, not only that, with uh, that's kind of a, that almost foreshadows the whole David and Goliath thing as well. Uh, so tell me, what was your favorite part in the whole book? Well, I've got a couple. It's really hard to pick out just one. So, well, let's talk about a few of them. Okay. Well, one of them was uh, there was a, a section in there where King Saul was being tormented by demons and evil spirits. Uh, another one was when uh, King Saul was actually delivered into the hands of David in the cave that they were they were hiding. They were hiding the he and his mighty men, and King Saul was delivered into his hands, and yet uh, David did not take his life. There's love stories in there. There's war. There's uh, caught family inter personality issues and things like that. It's like it, it's it's real to life, and you can bring it to your implied in your own thought process and that's the thing that I like about it is it because it paints the picture and you get to imagine it by uh, putting it into your head mm -hmm. and uh, almost running that head movie that you get when you're <laughs> with a, when you're reading these books right yeah it's very raw and emotional on every level um, it truly 
is an amazing movie in the making. It really needs to be a, a mini series or a series of movies or something like that. I, I could see it be like a Lord of the Rings trilogy or maybe even a mini series. So what would you say to someone who's interested in getting this book? Um, well, first off, get it. Second off, read it and have uh, scriptural references right there because they're right there. And I, I think there needs to be like almost footnotes of, you know, okay, this is here, this is here, this is discovered in uh, this archaeological dig or whatever, because you, you've been to the the uh, Israel and seen all these places as well. So it actually, you're writing about stuff you've seen. Mm -hmm. And it brings, I've never been there. So I, I get to see it through the eyes of what you've I've seen before. That's awesome. Did you feel like you were there? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I wish I well, that, that's on the, on my bucket list of places to go now. <laughs> it's just, I've got to go. I've got to that, go. that has to be number one. Yeah. <laughs> number and, one and on your list. As, another thing I'd tell, to, tell them is that uh, this is not just a book that is based in the Old Testament, but it's also a great story. The story is one of those epic stories that has lived on and on and on through time. And uh, this telling of it is much more graphic and more detailed and, and more involved than it has been said before. So this is this is one of those gotta have books. Absolutely, it really comes to life. And we just, I just love that when somebody as gifted as Dean could put together a book that's all scripturally based, true um, and researched. And it just, it really comes to life like that. And you just, like I said before, you just fall in love with each character for sure. Yeah, some of them die and you don't want them to. <laughs> right? Oh my goodness, I know. I know there's just some, there's one story in there that's obviously biblical and he brings it up in his book that's just so heart-wrenching that when he wanted me to reread the newest edits i just I, I had to put that chapter down i'm like i just it's the most dreaded story i think in the bible of all times it's like i just cannot read that one more time did you even have an idea of what which chapter i'm referring to um the uh, death of jonathan well, that was close, but the one with the priests when oh, David oh, shows up, yeah. to, right? It's like even in scripture, when I'm reading the Bible just by itself, I just avoid that one because it's so heart wrenching to me that something like that would happen for real. Like, Lord, how did that even happen? You're you're right. I, that was one of the. I kind of rush over that part. Did you? <laughs> I did not, too. It's always my favorite part, <laughs> but you know it happened, and I needed to be there and. By the way, that brings Doak back into the whole picture too. Yes, yeah, somebody that you love to hate right there. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Now tell me, who else would you recommend this book to? So there's a lot of um, there's a lot of Christians out there that I think would just absolutely love to read this book because of everything we've already discussed. But who else would enjoy this kind of a book? I've actually met uh, several of my friends are Jewish, and I would love to have them read this book, just because, you know, it, it's their history too. Absolutely. And I, I know a lot of them don't really know the uh, backstory of King David, even though, the, you know, they're in the Jewish faith and that. So I, I was actually talking to one just, uh, gosh, a couple of weeks ago, and. Uh, I said, it's like, I'm reading this book about King David. And she said, uh, oh, I, I really don't know a whole lot about him. I'm like, well, you've got, I've got a book that you have to read. So it's one of those ones where, okay, whenever this gets out, I'm gonna send this book here. <laughs> Cause oh. I can't, I don't, I don't wanna give away too much, but at the same time, I think she needs to know. I mean, it, it's, it's just one of those ones where you, it has such good background and history to it. That, I think they would love it. Non non Christians, people that don't know anything about uh, the book, non non Jewish, non Christians, uh, no, that don't know the story of David and Goliath. Kind of like when I watched Braveheart, I never heard anything about it. 
didn't know anything about it. Love the book, love the story. This is similar to that. For anybody who doesn't know scripture or doesn't know the story could pick up the book and just read it from um, the perspective of wanting to go on a journey and just in, enjoy all the suspense and the adventure in there. And then it completely wraps up in the end. So even if you don't know scripture, you're not going to be wondering what's going on in the book because the book will explain everything going on. It is a complete story. Well, yeah, and it explains it without getting scriptural. Right. Does that make sense? It doesn't Absolutely. read like the Bible at all. It reads Absolutely. like it reads like a movie script. It reads like something you want to see and you want to keep going on. And at the end of the book, I'm like, it, it, I need more pages. Right? <laughs> it's not done yet. <laughs> I know. I don't know what we're going to do because he's got to get on part two and part three. I mean, we don't have another 12 years to wait, right, James? <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and that's kind of why I've read it so many times is I get to the end of the book. It's like, well, like, okay, I, 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 need, my, I need my fix. And so right. I go to the front of the book and start again. <laughs>